Hello ladies and Germans, how are you all doing? This is Con Over coming to you with some more Company of Heroes 2 1v1 action. Today we have ourselves a doozy of a game, at least I hope it's a doozy of a game. Between the Wehrmacht up here in the north, played by Frost, building his infantry company on the very, very tippy tip edge of his um, base sector. And Barbarossa down here playing the Soviets. Once again, Barbarossa playing the Soviets when realistically he should be playing the um, Germans all the way through. If you know your history, you know exactly why I'm doing that. He is, of course, running Armored Assault Tactics, one of the kind of quietly really, really quite good commanders given the 85 um, version of the T-34, the IL-2s, the IS-2s. Most importantly, this radio intercept thing right there. A very, very um, powerful opportunity uh, for every Soviet player out there. Now, Frost, what's he bringing to the fray? Well, he's got Fortified Armor Doctrine, which gives him an elephant, which would be kind of cool. Although, um, I haven't seen too many pachyderms on this field, if you know what I mean. Jaeger Infantry Doctrine, and a Joint Operations Doctrine. So this is one that also doesn't get a lot of play, uh, but it's sort of like Fortifications Doctrine mixed with, uh, heck, I don't even know what to call the, the other half of that. Um, but gives you some nice distance fire while also giving you a direct um, emplacement like the Pack 43 and the artillery field officer is not terrible either. I mean, he's not great, but he's not terrible. Um, but what are we going on already? So Frost opening up Grenadier Machine Gun, and then with another Grenadier Squad. Barbarossa going for a triple conscript opening. Um, so shockingly, we're not going to be seeing any powerful penals here today, at least not initially. Indeed, we're not even seeing any kind of tech structure at all. So I'm surprised there's been nothing whatsoever being built. Combat engineers moving down to the south, and maybe he was just putting more emphasis on this field point and this VP, and with Crossroads, it's very, very easy to kind of get, um, you know, to, to really kind of miss what's important and to focus instead on taking these outside points. Grenadiers, though, are trying to sandwich these conscripts between them, but there's just not enough firepower, I would tell you, on the German side of things. He's got to chalk it up to, let's call it relative um, Soviet inexperience to successfully push back the these uh, conscript charge. And even then, you see it's not easy. The, um, both squads suffering 50% casualties, a third squad coming on in. And this is a big infantry engagement less than three minutes into this game. One Grenadier squad getting forced back. MG42 lining up, I'm guessing, just beyond. Oh, no, he's going for the house. He, he might be able to get it as well. It's a foot race. And the Germans win it. Um, conscripts do take this position right here, cutting off the Germans from all the resources. But since the Germans now have a godhouse down here, it would be very uh, pretty much incumbent, I would say, on the Soviets to back away soon. Very, very soon. Squad right here is going to get suppressed. Um, there we go. I was to say, it should get suppressed right about now, but it finally does. Um, and Molotov package is being brought in, so it's an uncommon selection from Barbarossa's troops, and yet that's a good call on this early, early garrison. Um, this garrison uh, right by the center part of the map. Now, the plus side to that is the Soviets were able to continue um, controlling the central VP, uh, but it's not going to be too easy for them. He's going to get it down just in time. He's going to get a no. He's not going to get a burst off. He's going after the other conscripts instead. So massive media engagements happening in the central part of the field here. Um, Russians just continue to just cap and cap and cap some more. Um, but the Germans do have more control once more with um, this. Grenadier Pioneer set up in the middle part of the map that should be able to hold on pretty easily and the proof of that is certainly in the pudding as these conscripts right here are all heavily heavily damaged um, only now getting back up to nearly full strength and that's taking away a lot of manpower from Barbarossa's squads um, what's more with the current way that his tech structures don't exist Barbarossa is going to be very very late I would say getting to um, a second and third tier Regardless, now we're in a flame war down here, and I don't know, will the combat engineers make it out? One more burst of flame might take them? No, instead they're going to back up into this house here. Um, with the Grenadiers hunkering down, it's going to be decent enough for them. I would think, yep, here comes a Molotov package over the top. Grenadiers, oh no, going after the, the Pioneers instead. I thought it was going to be going after that garrison, but it seems that Frost's troops were just encouraged to back away, and that's the most important thing for him. He's still not going for that battle phase one, instead preferring to take some more... Uh, concentrated positions, and D getting a um, middle VP and the northern one as well. 
One second, folks. I'm sorry. I saw someone mowing the lawn. Give me one second. Already, I think we're set awkwardly enough. It's my landlord doing it right about now. Um, so I have to close the windows. It's a little bit warm today. We're getting a setting to turbo prop fan though. So if you hear the sound of a decapitation, it means my head is gone and uh, Mr. Awesome is here is rendering the video for me. Um, 462 to 485, Germans do control a two to one cap and they're taking away the fuel from the Soviets even as the Soviets are doing the same treatment to them up in the north. Uh, I'm trying to think about now, please, there we go, attacking up, there we go. We're seeing a tech up, we're seeing a bunker coming down back in base for the Germans. And I don't know if Barbarossa has gone for medics. No, he's not. He only has that Molotov package. Now, it's a little uncommon to see Molotovs being utilized so much these days. Indeed, you usually see, like, it used to be It used to be the very standard play. It used to be all the time. Um, but now, it's, it's so such a rare thing. Most Soviets preferring just to take the losses as opposed to just kind of um, being able to pound out the garrison burning them out of their particular positions so a very stalinistic look i would say now uh grenadiers in the meantime i tossed out a rifle grenade didn't do a whole lot of damage at least to this group unless it went over here which point it still didn't do a ton of damage um in fact i think those are all german bodies yes they are uh retreating pioneer though has fallen back and medics are coming on in and i would think that frost wants to very very quickly build his lechte mechanized company and kind of push the advantage he hasn't seen maxims he hasn't seen mortars, he hasn't seen penals, he hasn't seen scout snipers, he's seen nothing so far. So he's got to know that he's in a pretty good space um, technologically. Uh, mine over here will definitely cause a little bit of an issue the next time the Germans come into play. And these conscript waves are um, pushing back a lot of the aggression out of Frost's men. And more Molotov, she's... There's been more Molotovs being utilized here than the last, like, three OKW games I've casted. And considering how often the OKW uses those dang things, it, that's pretty impressive. Also, for such a small bottle, I'm surprised it creates such a big flame. Um, we are going to see the Soviets cross the 50-yard line and really be pushing into German territory, sacrificing a few tickets to do so. Uh, but a rushed half-track... Uh, I'm, I'm calling Flammenwerfer for half-track. Uh, the Soviets have nothing up. They haven't teched at all. I'm calling I'm calling a Flamin for, for half-track. AT grenade's coming out now, so he's going full into making his troops um, supreme. Supremely good. Uh, conscripts. So it's very, very well-rounded groups, anyway. Um, and a sixth squad? A sixth squad of conscripts. Is he really just playing Soviet wave tactics? Because that could be kind of amusing, but I imagine that would fall off rather quickly. He's not quite on the field yet, not enough resources, that's what it is. Um, he's going to come up, throw a couple of bursts of fire at these uh, conscripts, I'd imagine. No. No, he's not. He's going to play kind of goosey. Then again, he hasn't seen any... He's not going to see any um, usage of abilities out of Barbarossa, so he has no idea that his opponent already knows who he's been using the entire time. And we are at long last seeing a support weapon compania which means we're going to see a Zisk gun in probably about 30 seconds or so. Not too terribly long, but still a, a, a decent chunk of time. Um, and still, no tech into the Thalmanfeffer. Oh, that's why. I look at the wrong side. I was like, he's got such incredible amount of munitions. And I realized, oh, wait a second, that's the Soviets. So Grenadiers will take some losses here and there, but will be able to just reinforce consistently. And that's really the power of this half-track. This guy's going to get pinged in about a second and a half, though, I imagine. There he goes. And almost immediately, another one comes right back out. So it's like a, a tiny little Wehrmacht factory. Germans, in the meantime, taking away the fuel point um, from the Soviets. Soviets teching into a tanky battalion command, you can see right yonder. Um, I don't know if that'll lead into a quick T-70 or quick-ish T-70. I mean, it's after 10 minutes, so it's uh, very, very late. And now we're seeing a combined arms approach. Um, pioneers sending sheets of flame. Grenadiers to back them up on kind of close in combat. And these nice base of fire coming out from the half track. And Barbarossa not going for any Zisk gun at all. I kind of thought he was really going to put a Zisk gun out. That would be a very, very good call to me. Conscripts in the meantime are having a close quarters action between these Grenadiers. And so far, things are not going particularly well for them. Dropping three bodies already to their only one of the Germans. And that's going to continue to happen. Um, 
especially with the Germans gaining more and more veterancy and the Soviets just dropping more and more lives. Uh, as you can see right here, Pioneers do get a little bit of flame, um, a little bit of sunburn, a little bit of flame burn from the Mach 3 flamethrower, but finally a Maxim is coming out. So the first non-conscript unit being built here is a Maxim. I'm not sure I necessarily agree with that decision. And then also notice, forgive me, there's an MG30, MG42 into this house right here. It's going to encourage, oh no, it's the original one. I'm going to say a, a new MG42, but that's incorrect. That is the original one um, that's been seeing the field since, you know, the, the word go. Concepts in the meantime, got to run through a couple of bits of fire here, but not too much to really be too concerned about. And the newest Maxim comes on in, and now this wave of humanity is coming up from the Russians. But the Germans have seized the strategic points. So the question is, can this MG42... Oh my gosh, this MG42 is going to just shred everything. Suppression number one. Suppression number two. Suppression number two. Suppression number three. No, surprisingly enough, that's not getting suppression on the, on the another one. There we go. Suppression number three. And so while there's been an a AT grenade hurled onto that half track, there is now AP incendiary ammo being thrown at these conscripts. So these guys are not going to make it too much closer, I think. But that, that Flammenwerfer, the Mach 3 Flamethrower, definitely will. But that's just basically, basically given the Germans all the time they need to seize this control of about, what, 70% of this battlefield? And while this guy might go down, no, he's not going down just yet. He's not yet begun to fight, he says. And with wave upon wave of Soviets rushing out here, he's just trying like hell to keep the conscripts pushed away. Another AT grenade going out, going to do more damage, but it's not going to be enough to force back that half-track. Maxim getting some suppression of its own, though, um, but it's not without cost that the Soviets just continue to pour more and more manpower in. And I have to wonder, is this the Germans just trying to bleed the, the Soviets? Are they trying to actually take them out? I, I can't really tell what's going on. Because we now we're getting soft retreats out, and now with the half-track dead, it's going to be lights out for a lot of Germans. Um, no, Frost, don't tell me you're going to drop a squad here. Twelve rifles firing at this retreating Pioneer, and it's heavy. His stuff is weighing him down, but he's making it out alive anyway, so luckily enough for him. Taking a battle phase two in the meantime for the Wehrmacht, and Frost is doing a decent job. Well, he's up about 50 tickets. That's That, that window's going to close a little bit, though, as um, Barbarossa does seize a couple of VPs. Uh, but you can see by the map that the Soviets have this little, um, you know, finger in the middle of the entire field. And other than that, it's it's a, it's a German map. We are going to see charging conscripts, though. We're going to see more, another fusillade of Molotovs. No, indeed, they're not even in cover. I'm not sure he knows that, though. There we go. It's another Molotov coming out. And while it's going to cook a lot of Germans, he's, he's paying an incredible price to advance even just a tiny bit. He has already teched up to Mechanized Armor Compania. Um, which is a great opportunity for him. He's had some pretty good fuel supply uh, for the most part. And now we will see if that tech decision can get him what he wants. Germans, in the meantime, going to take away this position. Might be able to decap it. No, not going to. This conscript wave is going to get in there before it happens. Um, but it will allow the Germans enough time to get into the center part of the map and seize that back for themselves. Grenadier Squad, in the meantime, dives into this house and realizes it's more of a death trap. I'm trying to think about what would be the best command decision at this time for um, Frost. Well, um, if you want to take a look, quick look again, so Fortified Armor might be decent, but I think probably the way to go is going to be the Jaegers. I'm surprised there's not a lot of tanks as a late game opportunity for him. Uh, indeed, though, every single time we see these conscripts churning on forward to getting shot to pieces. No support armor company, uh, uh, excuse me, support armor corps being called in by the Germans. Instead, some Pigrens, uh, which could form the basis of the AT threat, at least, at least from the infantry side of things. Uh, Germans, in the meantime, to the south are shifting on this field point yet again. And the nice thing about Crossroads is that it gives a lot of opportunities to take out the vital positions from your opponent, uh, the northwestern and the southeastern positions were rather good and usually ripe for conquest. Um, unfortunately, despite being able to shove back 
the conscripts in the south, he cannot maintain a consistent control over this position. Uh, Frost over Barbarossa, that is. And Barbarossa even now is calling in his first tank. Where's his Pikarens? And are they into the fight yet? Okay, they're getting closer to the fight. Not quite where they want to be. But those STGs would be able to really do a good number on the combat engineers given half a chance. The Germans themselves do have a trip cap, 446 to 370. Um, that's going to get far worse for the uh, for the excuse me for the Soviets before it gets better. Luckily for them, this is not a machine gun, and indeed they're going to back away uh, with a little bit of speed. Heavy Panzer Corps coming on down for the Germans, and if he controls this fuel point right here, it won't be too long before he calls in a Panther or maybe even something like a Boom Bar would be kind of amusing, though rather unlikely. Maxim in the, in the southwestern house, um, LMG-42 in the northeastern, and yet again, we're just going to continue to see this kind of consistent back-and-forth play. Frost stretching the map in both directions, really playing a solid um, co-game. Meantime, he might be able to use his munitions a little bit better here. Like I said, though, hopefully he won't throw out any kind of grenades. He knows the T-3045 is on the field, so he knows what he's playing up against. Probably the best thing for him right now is to realize that his opponent has gone for that um, armored assault tactics, and to realize he's going to be facing off against that IS-2 in the late game. He's already clicked on here, found out to... Oh, no. Oh! Oh, it's an okie doke. A 76 getting called a 985, but that was a 76... Uh, an 85. All right, so the Germans control the southeastern point. Soviets taking the northwestern again. We just see that trade of fuel. And the heavy panzer corps has got a little bit of tying up between the boom bar or the panther. Now, if Frost calls in the panther, and I'm going to say what I usually say, and I don't understand why people fixate so much on the panther in this game. It's good, but it's not stellar is the thing. Um, especially over the P4, it just it doesn't make sense to pay the increased cost. You're not getting enough extra oomph. But there is that Panther indeed. So Frost is going Lightning War? Jaeger Infantry, excuse me, I'm sorry. I think Lightning Wars I just saw in a previous game I cast with the Jaeger Light Infantry. Um, but here we go. So a Panther is coming onto the field. But this gun and anti-tank grenades with a lot of munitions. We have more than enough time to take out a single Panther. And 17 minutes in, what had been a trip cap for the Germans is now a trip cap for the Soviets. And it's all because of this little fella down here. S mines in the meantime, oh my gosh, okay, so uh, some poor sods were forced across this battle space and have taken significant losses. Only one model making it back to base to tell the tale of his fallen comrades. Um, and a TN-35 mine being placed in the dead center part of the field, and I'm surprised the Germans don't see it already. Uh, come on, show me what I want to see. Nope, not going to be the German. Um, he does see it, though. He knows that it's there. And now with the Shreks coming in behind, that T-3476 is not going to want to be around. Double that as this Panther comes onto the space as well. Now, um, the the whole Lightning War Doctrine is nice, I guess. Um, this is definitely kind of cool for the whole stupid close air support. That's decent with the Light Arty Barrage. But I, I always like having a late game kind of knockout punch to call in against my opponent. And very often, I don't think that these abilities don't make it uh, worthwhile. Uh, this whole thing, uh, ambush camouflage, for example, is nice and all that, but it, it's not worth going down that line. This is okay. I mean, the best thing about that upgrade is that it allows you to find out the uh, the uh, positions for your opponent, and even then, that's not that that wonderful. Is this gun coming out? IL-2 strike coming on in, and I think the Panther's going to get away with minimal losses. He's going to take a couple of bursts of fire here, though. No, not even. Not even. Shockingly enough, it takes no firepower from it whatsoever. Panther trooping back in. He's going to get one more shot off, I think. No, he's not. And the IL-2, is that just uh, infantry? Stripping infantry of opportunity. That's a curious thing. I thought it was gonna, going to be actually be a worthwhile ability here, but no. And now we're going to see this last, last uh, man in the squad trying desperately to throw out an AT grenade, not managing to do so, and paying with his life because of it. Grenadiers over here, I'm um, going to take a Molotov from this plucky conscript squad. And indeed, I imagine they're going to turn around and try to throw out. No, they can't. They don't have the munitions for it. I thought they could maybe perhaps try to turn around and throw 
um, an AT grenade at that panther. IL-2 getting one last strafe in before it goes back home. And then Maxim starts to troop on forward. He's got two stars of veteran fatigue, six kills to his name. Not that much, really, all things considered. Um, and these conscripts are not going to want to be here for much longer. Um, especially as this panther gets repaired back to full super quickly. Um, the grenadiers are going to be suppressed, but not terrible for the Germans. Yes, he took a damaged engine crit, but he's got two squads of attendant pioneers. And now we're going to see another half-track coming out. Curious decision. Um, I would have invested in, at the absolute most, another Panzerwerfer. Um, or, no, not the... Is that Stukasafus? Panzerwerfer? What is the name for this one? I always say it the opposite. Oh, there's Panzerwerfer. Zwei und Vierzig. Um, even though they're, they're very underperforming, I'd rather have that for the all the infantry that gets run on this map. This gun is really far forwards, though. And where are those Pegrins? They're nowhere near, are they? No, they're below this position. But Light Artie Barrage is going to be called in. These guys need to back it out now. Um, and I think they're going to take a little bit of firepower. Yep, there goes that Maxim getting hammered pretty hardcore. Uh, and indeed, it's an excellent time to get picked off. But no, main gun destroyed instead on the Panther. He's got to back away right now. Luckily for him, he deflects a shot. And this half-track needs to back up very quickly under his own power or else. p Grant's facing the wrong direction. One thing coming on through. Uh, Faust, perhaps? No Faust. And both tanks limp away. Uh, the 76 are just barely more health, um, uh, barely less health, excuse me, than his German counterpart. And I think the Germans are trying to get one last round off before... The, okay. Uh, Pigrand, no, no munitions for the bundle grenade. So he might be able to decrew it though, and that would be a good win as well. There we go, decrews it. Um, so while this guy over here is definitely damaged, and these guys can't hit the broadside of a barn with a Shrek, um, the Germans might be able to get one. Oh no, never mind. It's gonna, get, it's gonna get recruited. Unlucky for the Germans. Very unlucky for the Germans. Grenadiers in the meantime trying to put some cover fire down against this Maxim, but it's not going to go particularly well. But here comes the Panther. One more main battle round. There it goes. There's finally that, that Tormentor will be taking out. And given the Germans a deadly, deadly edge in firepower, even the SU-85 coming out, the, the damaged T-3476 uh, is not going to have enough oomph to take out this Panther. Now, I'm wondering, would the SU-85 really the best option, considering that this 230 would have been a heck of a lot closer? Let's take a quick look again at the SU-85 cost. Um, he might have felt he needed that now, but 130 fuel more, he would have been another minute away from this. And that's worth losing some pickets here or there. That meant more than enough opportunity to bring in an IS-2. And, ladies and gentlemen, I think I trade an IS-2, and a slightly later IS-2, than, um, over an a SU-85 any day of the week and twice on Thursdays. Germans, in the meantime, are going to make this a quick trip cap unless the 76 does secure mode. No, he doesn't. Instead, it's going to be the entire Soviet army moving down to the southeast. <coughs> and indeed, finding out this Grenadier squad, he, better want, he might want to run away now. Faust comes on and damages 76 pretty easily. And with another round slamming into the side of it, uh, all that's really left is for the SU-85 to troop on forwards and try to pretend that he can hold back the impending tide of armor. Worth noting in the meantime as well, there's a, there's a mine just underneath the combat engineers. So some damage being done um, back and forth, but I still at the German position far more, um, even with the rather supreme veterancy of Barbarossa's men. I mean, you have to really, really acknowledge what a good job that's been done. Half drop trooping on forwards. This is not a good decision, though. This guy is too heavily, excuse me, too lightly armored, or too easily taken out. Might be a better way to put it. To survive in the battle space. Going to use in the meantime. Going to see rifle grenade coming out. No, not quite yet. Instead, we're going to see a destroyed fortified position. And this is a perfect time to throw out a rifle grenade on those guys, especially with all that extra look at this it's all this all this material for frost is right on top of it the soviet's just getting compressed more and more and more 
Now, another Ziskan's been made, um, but with two Panthers on the field as well as all this infantry, I really have to start fearing for Barbarossa's men. And this, his dis decision um, to combat this with a mortar, it's not going to be enough. And there's that mine that just got hit. So now we have two Panthers, one of them with a damaged engine, moving in on the 76. Might lose one of them because of the Ziskan trooping on in. Oh my gosh, he's not going to get it off in time. The, the ram misses. Oh my gosh, the ram misses. He overloaded the ram. It didn't happen. Destroyed engine. That thing's going to brew up in a second here. Meanwhile, the Soviets um, repairing this Panther under fire, trying desperately to get it back under control here, and with the help of these Pigrens, that might be enough, and it is going to be enough. Good gosh, limping away are those Panthers, and Barbarossa has just lost his his this gun. It's been decrewed. We get recruit any moment here, but um, machine uh, gun has them well under arm. Might get suppressed a little bit, and that's not perfect, mind you, but it still could be a hell of a lot worse for Frost's men. Now, here, finally, here we go. A AT grenade comes out. These guys have picked up an LMG from the airsat's German counterparts. But will they pay for it with their lives is the question. Just going to troop it on forward yet again. And again, the, while these Panthers are going to take some damage, um, Frost can just decrew this gun all day. And with two tanks settled into this position right here and a couple of squads of pioneers to sit there and back them up, I don't know what Barbarossa thinks he's going to accomplish slamming his head into this over and over. 26 minutes and 50 seconds in, 370 to 188. Mortar is doing some, finally doing some work into, the, into action here. Got a couple of kills. Oh no, just one. And this Maxim trying to put some curtains of fire down as well by itself. But I do not know what can be done to help Barbarossa on this one? Um, AT grenade coming on in, I imagine. And a little bit of an FU. No, but the Panther backs away just in case. And worth noting, taking a quick look. So in terms of... Wow, okay, so that's why he's pulling 76s. His bulletins all support a 76 decision. Frost, in the meantime, has not been playing a lot of mines. Um, got a little bit more Fausts, uh, but has no, no AT um, guns whatsoever. And really, no reason to bring them in. We are going to see conscripts coming on a forward again and doing some good work against the Pigrens, but they're going to charge forwards, take casualties like crazy, and get forced right back again. So I don't know what Barbarossa is trying to accomplish here. And then the road trip cap, um, it just continues to get worse and worse for him. This gun's going to get forward enough to get a couple of rounds out, and SU-85 coming in to throw rounds to ping off the side armor of the more vetted up Panther. MG got taken out. Okay, so that that's a good that's a good opportunity for him right there. But it's not enough for me to really be this aggressive. And indeed, now we're going to see the whole um, gun runs coming on in from Stuka Close Air Support. Uh, are they going to attack everything? No, just vehicles only. So the SU-85 is thrown back in disarray, and I believe we're going to see a dead Grenadier squad. Yes, giving an LMG over to Barbarossa's troops. Don't tell me this is how it ends. And Frost loses some of his infantry, and it could be the, a bit of damage here and there, but a third panther is coming out. There's still the two, let's call it the repair group of these pioneers. He's got to rush on in, and um, if he's eight guys with blow torches, I think that would get you fixed up pretty quickly in a gif there, wouldn't it? Kind of wish we'd see a blue targeting uh, Rondo, because for a second I thought somehow the IL-2 is being called in despite... Barbarossa not having anywhere near the amount of resources to do so. But all the Soviet stuff is back in base, and it looks like the Germans... Oh, excuse me, except for this one rather um, wounded squad. And the Germans still have a 2-1 to one cap at the absolute minimum. They will come under fire here, which is just unfortunate. Um, and you want to see, despite having the ambush camouflage, um, they haven't wouldn't be able to use it at all. And so a lot of munitions that just don't make sense. And these Grenadiers are just going to continue to take losses. Retreat, my friend. Retreat. Okay. Uh, but Conscript's charging forward yet again. And doing some good work here and there. But um, Molotov, number one. Foolish decision. Yes, it's going to bake those Pioneers some. But they can just reinforce off this half-track. I'm surprised by how effective this half-track usage has been. Usually, like I said, you see half-track maybe 12, 15 minutes into the game... It gets blown apart, 
And that's the last you see of it. Will we see a dead Panther Grenadier? No, it looks like he's going to make it. Oh, never mind. He goes down on retreat. Uh, but these machine gun crews are not going to make it out either, it looks like, for the Soviets. Um, this captured MG getting taken out. Another one getting slaughtered. Two more Panthers coming on in to charge this Zis gun. And SU-85 is still back in base getting repaired. Three six three to seventy eight. The Russians do have a two to one cap advantage over that of the Germans, and we're going to see consistent attempts just to recruit this Zisk gun back into um, play. SUD five coming on in. He might be sacrificing himself for the greater good. So, um, Germans down to just three squads of infantry, and Zisk gun coming on in. That's not the greatest decision. Going to get decrewed yet again. There it goes another decrew. This mortar is going to get decrewed, and that's two stars of veterans you want to hold on to. And is it only oh, a third Zisk gun for the match being called in, but that's not going to be enough to see them off the field. So one of the squads of Pioneers has gone down, um, but another one getting repaired and called in just almost immediately. And despite these kind of deep caps coming out from the Soviets, the Germans are able to take things back and uh, bring it under their control. Down to the south, we will see Germans are going to take a 2-1 to one cap yet again. And in the north, I imagine, yep, there goes a Grenadier squad to reinforce and to pick up the northern VP as Barbarossa's men are heavily, heavily outgunned. The damaged engine Panther coming up to the fore. Not entirely too sure why on this one. Indeed, I think um, he was just trying to get spotting for the other tanks. Instead, um, we're going to see one recruit Zisk gun and a full strength of this effectively pushing back one of these, this Panther patrol, let's call it. That's a surprise. That's very much a surprise. Meanwhile, in the south, Maxim's going to try to uh, push back and gets pushed back in turn. Both guys pulling away for the amount of firepower coming their direction. 337 to 62. Again, please don't tell me that um, Frost throws this game away in the absolute last second. He's been up like this entire time. And while, in my mind, he should have been charging into that base to just pick off as much of the infantry as he could about five minutes ago, um, he is up seven times the amount of tickets that the Soviets have and will continue to beat and just continue to increase that lead over and over and over again. More Pegrens being called in, though, which means we're going to see some more Shreks on the, on the field. And all four grenadiers hiding behind this tiny post, a uh, tiny bit of um, stone fencing here. And as good as those combat engineers are, I would not want to be them for much longer. Indeed, combat engineer, his friends that died a glorious death in service of the motherland. Unfortunately, these conscripts right here not picking up the center, uh, excuse me, the southeastern VP. And uh, in the meantime, a push to the north is occurring by uh, the last, let's say, a rather, actually a very vetted up core of Soviets. Really well done. Question is, will we see a push for the Germans at all to stop this from happening? No, instead they're going to be uh, consistently suppressed. And with now a Molotov being utilized, these guys need to book it or they're going to die. But the Panther Patrol is almost um, repaired. And I'm kind of wondering if I should be happy to see a large RD barrage, whether up here or whether seeing I have um, my opponent charging on forwards. I'd like to see that kind of activity. Scatter them, force them to move back. Um, this Panther doesn't seem to be too concerned about subtlety, though. He just charges into the Soviet position and takes a couple of rounds. It looks like he's going to take more than just a couple, though, from these Zisk guns. Um, question is, will another damaged engine? Jeez. So, thank you, AT, AT Grenades. 3-8 to 27. These Panthers are doing um, pretty much all the heavy lifting, I would say, for Frost troops. And this Half-Track's got to watch out. Oh, he's going to get taken out. Three stars of veterancy, though. Um, keep in mind, the Half-Track has now gone through a significant rework. So, now it takes a little bit more... Um, he, he leeches a bunch of veterancy off, and he's not really even supposed to be in the battle space now, is he? He's supposed to be there just to kind of be um, 
the taxi cab for everybody there. Uh, for all of the, uh, how do I call it? The taxi cab for all infantry on the field. Um, late Artie Barrage is finally coming in, uh, which means that these guys are going to take some real losses any second here. Uh, they're trying to move around, might be able to do it, but I think the Germans could push in after that and take him out. Uh, Panthers, in the meantime, trying to chase down the SU-85, and deflections abound, misses abound. And one more round should do it, though. There we go. There goes the SU-85. What about these Zisk guns to the north? Every single one of the Panthers has significant damage on engine crits on two of them. A last little bit of health on um, that half-track. One of the damaged crits, uh, one of the engine damaged Panthers does go down. And indeed, with a recruit this gun down to the south, I'm wondering will we see another one getting picked up here. He, they have gotten around. Curious. Nope, never mind. Gets hit, gets hammered, and that could be it. Panther needs to start putting rounds like crazy down into this. And uh, with the German infantry not able to back this up, I'd be throwing down another late Artie Barrage like right here. Just continue to push back the opponent. Not allow them any respite. And now we're going to see exactly what's going to happen. Here, okay, another dive in for another anti-tank gun. I, I would be thrown in the Liardi Barrage. I cannot afford to lose this Panther. Um, in the meantime, though, the Soviets are losing a ton of resources. A bundle grenade coming out! Evaporating that squad. There he goes as well. These just guns limping away with barely any health in each of these models. In fact, a lot of the Russian army is barely limping away. Um, it's really just guys coming out of base right now that have any kind of health whatsoever. Conscript, MG, and um, Combat Engineer. It is a captured MG, by the way, that is a, going to be an MG-42. And while he has been able to narrow the gap, Barbarossa is still down to about 10% of the tickets of his opponent. Late Artie Barrage again, folks. Here's the, here's the time for it. There's so many times for this thing, and this is definitely one of them. Pegrens, though, churning through these combat engineers. Going to just need to back up. Never mind, they're going to go down. Frost not paying attention here. And Concept's doing actually what they do best, running over, merging um, with these combat engineers and bringing them back to full strength. That's almost never utilized by anybody, so really well played there. Coming up on 38 minutes, 183 to 27, and now here comes an IS-2. So Frost may have waited too long. This might be the final straw that breaks it. Um, even with this Dugo Close Air Support, though, that might be the great equalizer against this kind of play. He's getting ambush camouflage on these guys. What a waste. What a waste. Once again, guys, what does this do? So um, if he ambushes somebody while camouflaged, it briefly increases the damage briefly that's uh, I can't get behind a skill that gives you that minimum of a bonus I, I can't it's just it's impossible for me meantime the IS-2 reveals themselves to the, to the world uh, a couple of misses do occur immediately and these Panthers are going to take shots um, because of the Zisk guns now the IS-2 so if I'm them I need to be backing up I need to be backing away and I cannot lose what's left of my armored core. Uh, Grenadier shifting on in, though, trying to take out these attendant conscripts, and if he's able to do so, that's a big win. Nope, not going to happen, though. These guys forced back into retreat. Panthers, again, turn one volley onto these anti-tank guns. That's all you need, just one. One volley. Instead, damage engine crit comes out. These guys are going to continue to throw rounds into... Yikes. Oh, God. This poor half-track. A last glorious death for him, though. Um, rushing on in just close enough to take out these anti-tank guns and clear the way for the Panthers. Potentially, one more round could get in just in time. No, it's not going to happen. Instead, these AT guns are going to be back into action, and that is not going to be good. I think we're going to see at least one of these Panthers die just about now. Oh, never mind. He's back. He's okay. He was able to decrew it quickly enough. But we see a dead combat engineer now. Yep, there we go. Finally, that guy is gone. And Panther throwing enough rounds into the IS-2 that he really convinces him to get away. We're seeing a charge for the AT gun. Yes, we are. 
Uh, but these guys are in negative cover. And now, just barely more positive. Uh, but it's still not going to be pretty. Back into negative cover. Back to the whole um, blood and guts and death and destruction all over the place. Uh, 148 to 27. He has gone and gotten hit again by another one of those stinking AT grenades. But Barbarossa is sacrificing so much to do it. 146 to 27. These conscripts are shifting around trying to pick up all these particular points. But I don't know how easily it's going to come to him. For that matter, geez, these P grenades should be shifting, shifting on up, taking out. Yep. On the grenade, mortar team, kaboof. That's one squad right there, folks. Um, and these conscripts, while being valiant, should not be able to capture this point in completion. One more burst of fire ought to do it. Maybe even a cannon shot. No, it's not going to be a cannon shot because he's got hold fire on. But this is not being capped anymore, and that's just as good for the Germans. Now a shrunken Maxim being sent forward, and more conscripts being called in. Uh, keep in mind, folks, one of those disc guns did survive, and now it's being recruited for, like, what, the third time, the fourth time? And Frost at long last is actually utilizing the, the um, Jaeger Light Infantry upgrade. Not using the whole kind of interrogation thing. That's pretty darn good, though. Um, but still, still having a very, very dangerous long-range squad. Panther, in the meantime, is going to go and start training shots again with this not-yet-repaired IS-2. One more round might do it. No, it's not going to happen. And um, time after time, we are going to see Grenadier Shoot on forwards into the meat grinder getting thrown away. Grenadier Shoot into the meat grinder getting thrown away. 117 to 27. After being down almost 150, 200 tickets, we are going to see Barbarossa close the gap quite a bit. I'm not sure why he's not calling in more vehicles um, to really suppress and take out these Panthers, to dive deep and take them out. Heck, for that matter, I don't know why he's not repairing the IS-2. It's a foolish, foolish decision here. And while these concepts are charging on in, trying to make sure they can recrew this tank gun, I mean, that's good, but I would trade a Panther for this, and I might even see it happen. Damaged engine, gun's been decreed again. And just constantly, we see, I can't tell you how many times these things have been crewed and uncrewed and recrewed and uncrewed and recrewed. But I don't think it's going to last. There we go. There goes another one. Just like Achilles. And a third half-track being called in by Frost. Apparently he's tired of losing infantry out on the map. He just wants to reinforce way the heck out there. Finally taking a 2-1 to one cap advantage again. Combat engineers coming in to take this point. Excuse me, take this AT gun. And just as quickly get decrewed. And Barbarossa says, forget it, bro. It's over. I can't deal with this anymore. And in exactly 43 minutes, Frost picks up the W. Uh, final score, 107 to 25. Win by way of surrender. Congratulations to Frost. Bad luck to Barbarossa. Um, definitely some interesting plays and misplays and other and otherwise on both sides. Um, and I'm really surprised that Barbarossa kind of picked the command that he did. I kind of thought he had a couple other good ones. Um, but he really wanted to leverage that radio intercept. Um, nevertheless, folks, thank you so much for tuning in. This is Con Oryx signing off. You all have a great day.